This is an example of using an energy balance, a transient uh, energy balance, to be able to develop an expression for the outlet temperature of this blending process. So we have a vessel with just one inlet flow and one outlet stream. Okay, so one inlet, one outlet, and uh, we have this diagram here that uh, shows also we have some, um, you know, some convective heat transfer from the ambient air and then we also have uh, heat loss from this uh, cooling jacket right here so this jacket around the blender is uh, is cooler than the fluid and so we're going to have work or heat that's going to be extracted from uh, the system we also have uh, some shaft work uh, coming in through this motor as this mixes it's going to also add energy to the fluid and potentially heat it up. So we want to derive an energy balance and use that to be able to predict the temperature coming out with all of these known input terms. Let's go through the um, this list of 12 steps for deriving uh, an energy balance and, and creating this dynamic simulation of the process. We're actually going to skip uh, steps 11 and 12 which are actually simulating them but we'll just set up the equations. If you'd like to come and see a little bit more information about balance equations, uh, come to apmyr.com slash pdc. And this is going to be under, um, if you come under the assignments, there's some instructional material on uh, developing uh, transient balance equations right here that helps you with mass, species, and momentum. And in our case, we're going to be using the energy balance. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this. Um, and paste it in and we'll start with that and then start simplifying out some of the terms okay so let's just start uh, you know we'll, we'll uh, go through it we'll need this balance equation at a further step in our 12 steps uh, they'll just have that there just for because uh, we'll need it in a little bit okay so the uh, objective for the simulation let's go ahead and start with these uh, 12 steps the objective is to be able to predict uh, the temperature coming out Okay, we have a schematic already. If we didn't have that schematic, uh, you'd need to, uh, you know, show this uh, and uh, basically dry, you know, show this schematic and label all of the variables, such as the cooling jacket temperature, the ambient air temperature, the inlet temperature, the volumetric flow rate in, uh, the volumetric flow rate out, and the outlet temperature. So uh, we want to be able to predict T2. Uh, coming out and we have our schematic so let's list some assumptions uh, let's start with uh, this problem statement here see if we can identify any of the assumptions from this um, the liquid heat capacity and density are constant for all streams so we're going to say that the C sub P and the density are going to be equal to constants so they're not going to change and um, Let's see, we have a couple other assumptions in here that we do have some convective heat loss and some other things going on there. Um, we'll just say those are two assumptions. Okay, determine the spatial uh, dependence. So um, in this case, we are going to assume that this is well mixed. And so if it's well mixed, then uh, T outlet is also equal to the uh, vessel uh, temperature so all of this is all one temperature you don't have pockets of hotter temperature for example around the mixing uh, uh, you know around the mixers that's something like that it's all one temperature okay and let's go on down to write the uh, dynamic balance okay here it is here's our balance equation we're going to say assume that the change in energy with respect to time is going to be the internal energy, the kinetic, and the potential energy. And uh, we're going to assume that um, the kinetic energy and the potential energy are going to be uh, negligible compared to the internal energy. So the change in temperature is going to be negligible compared to like the velocity of the fluid, for example. Okay, and then we're also going to assume that um, you know, there's no heat input, but if we did have heat input to the system, we could say that's non-zero. Okay, and we're going to say that uh, our energy is going to be represented by a quantity called enthalpy of our system. Okay, and then we have uh, the mass flow rate 
in, I'm gonna say that's mass flow rate one, times the enthalpy one, okay, minus the mass flow rate two, uh, times the enthalpy two, and then I'm gonna also add a term here. I didn't show it in the original balance, but uh, we're going to need to add the, um, the UA, and then I have uh, the ambient air temperature uh, minus temperature two. Okay, my well mix assumption says that the temperature inside the vessel is gonna be equal to the outlet temperature. And then I also have the, um, I'll say that's uh, A, Okay, plus U C A. Okay, this is the cooling jacket now, T C minus T2. Okay, so I have the convective heat transfer uh, terms uh, there as well. I'm going to assume no conduction away, uh, you know, from things that are touching the vessel. Uh, it's just going to be mostly the convective heat transfer. Okay, and then I also have the shaft work as well. Okay, so here's my equation that I'm starting with, a balance equation. All of the inlet terms, things that are going to make it hotter are going to be positive. All the things that are going to make it cooler are going to be uh, you know, negative. So, for example, if the ambient air temperature is less than T2, then this whole term is going to become negative and it's going to cool off uh, the tank. Uh, but I don't want enthalpy here. I want um, you know these, uh, the temperature instead. And so I need to write how enthalpy relates to um, the temperature. Okay, so I can do that with uh, uh, the in, instead of the H1 and the H2. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do, um, let's see, that's going to be C sub P, so M1. Uh, dot times C C P C C P is constant and then I'm going to just relate that to temperature temperature one and temperature two so my enthalpy is going to be equal to M C C P temperature minus T ref okay T reference temperature okay and uh, if I have a specific enthalpy um, I guess these are going to be uh, specific enthalpies here. I put a little hat over them. Um, then that just says it's C C P uh, T minus T ref. Okay, that's per quantity such as kilogram or mole or something like that. Okay, in this case it's uh, the enthalpy per kilogram. And so I have it in, in this form. If I use the same reference temperature for both of them, then uh, these two terms right here um, the reference temperatures are going to cancel out because I'm going to have M1 times uh, C sub P T1 minus T ref, okay, minus M dot 2 C sub P T2 minus T ref. And then when I combine those, uh, the T refs are going to cancel. Okay, so I'm going to carry the negative through here and the positive through there. And if I have a uh, constant uh, M dot coming in and out, which I can also assume in this case, M dot one equals M dot two, um, then uh, this is just going to, oh, let me put that in there, C sub P. Uh, that's going to simplify to that form right there. Okay, so that's how I, I combine those two. Uh, just with some assumptions, like I don't have any change in volume, so the mass flow rate in is going to be equal to mass flow rate out, and these reference temperatures that I had from the definition of enthalpy, those are going to be equal. Okay, let's go on down. Uh, let's continue simplifying here, um, and I also have, uh, you know, this definition here. Um, I'm going to use that as well right up there. Okay, and so I have D M C C P and then I have T minus T ref. Okay, I'm gonna write temperature two there. D T. And that's going to be equal to M dot C C P T one minus T two. And then I had all these other terms that I can't forget about. Alright, uh these out, T1 
22 plus U uh, C. I'm going to write that as a different heat transfer, overall heat transfer coefficient. Uh, and then that's going to be TC minus T2 plus the shaft work. Okay, so let's um, also, I'm going to write this a little bit bigger on the C sub P there. Okay, my mass is also going to be equal to the density times the volume. Okay, if I want to rewrite those, I can. Um, let me make this one a little bit bigger because not a subscript there. Okay, and then if I pull the, some of those constant things out, then I have rho V C sub P, and then I have D T2 DT, and then I have the minus T ref. I can separate those. Okay, if my T ref is constant, that's going to be equal to zero. And let's go ahead and write uh, the rest of this again. Okay, just rewriting all these terms to be able to carry them down. And you see, uh, let me see if I can do this right. TC minus T2 plus WS. Okay, so I have my dynamic uh, balance equation. Uh, you know, I'm, I would use this then to be able to simulate um, the temperature response of the system given all of the inputs, like I have T1 is gonna be one of my inputs, I have my ambient air temperature, which would be an input, and then my cooling jacket temperature, my shaft work, those would all be inputs that could potentially change. And this uh, dynamic balance would tell me how T2 is gonna change with each of those inputs. Okay, and then if I, um, let me go to make sure I covered all my other uh, steps here. So I, um, I use some of these other relationships like mass equals density times volume and my enthalpy correlation to relate that to temperature. I have uh, just the temperature two and one equation. So I have one equation, one unknown. And I've classified some of the variables. For example, um, you know, those, these are all my uh, inputs. And then my state uh, variable, the one that I'm going to be calculating, is going to be T2. Okay, so I've classified my inputs, classified my outputs or states. And then uh, we've also simplified uh, the balance equation based on the assumptions. Okay, and so here it is. Here's the balance equation. And again, if you want to go and uh, see the uh, solution kind of worked out in a little bit more detail, you can come to... Um, these uh, derived balance equations, and then come down here to this exercise number two, and if you select show solution help, it walks it through again right there with some of the math.